Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I want to cover how to add our project to source control. The reason why I want to do that is because I want to teach you that from early on. If you are a developer and you already know what I'm talking about, you can probably continue and skip this video. But if you're not a developer and you just want to make sure that you're doing the thing, the right thing, the right way by using common practices that a lot of game developers can do, make sure that you follow this video. So let's jump in and work on actually creating a new repository, adding some of the files that we're going to be working on to the repository and checking those in and pushing those to the cloud. All right, guys, so let me show you how we can add this to source control so that we can keep track of our changes, especially because it's really important for working in a team and you want to know what you know other people are working on and also pull their changes. So. I'm not going to give you a training on source control, but I'm going to give you a training on how to add this to, to something like GitHub or Bigpacket. For this video, I'm going to use GitHub because that's what I've been using for most of my projects. So the first thing that I need you to check is going to basically, let's see, edit and then project settings. And then in project settings, you got to check a couple of things. So you want to make sure that you have these four text enabled. If it had force binary, you wouldn't be able to basically read the, the assets that get generated by Unity. If you do force text, you're gonna be able to see what changes were applied to assets. So I'm just gonna leave that one at force text. And I actually think that's everything that we need to check in here. Perfect. And I'm gonna click on the X to close it. Then I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna go into GitHub. So I'm gonna open Chrome. And as you can see, I have I already have a few projects that I've been creating and sharing with you on some of my videos. So I'm going to create a new repository. Then I'm going to click and select the name that I want to. So I want to use Unity Editor Fundamentals. And we can also type in here, this is going to be Unity Editor Fundamentals Video Source Code. And you can put anything in the description that applies to you. And that's all I'm going to do for now. Just click on Create Repository. And it's going to give us the steps that we need to be able to add these to Source Control. So before I do that, I want to do something else. I'm going to click on my name again, open a new tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open and use one of the Git Ignore files that were generated for some of the other projects. The reason why I want to do that is because I don't want to add a lot of things that get compiled by Unity that we don't really need to keep track in source control. So this file is going to be generated and you're going to be able to see it in the project that we're creating. So I'm just going to copy that file. Excellent. And we're going to go in and go ahead and add some of these commands that we need to do. So it tells you here if you want to push an existing repository, just do these steps. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to copy that line and go back into my terminal and that's what I'm going to do. So I need to go into the Unity Editor Fundamentals which is what I just created and just going to add a new remote and it looks like it's going to give us a message saying this is not a Git repository. You got to do a Git in it before you, before you can do any Git commands because it hasn't been initialized as a Git repository just yet and now we can paste our Git remote our origin so what this is doing is adding the URL that you're going to be, you know, sending your code to. And also, you know, if you make any changes and you need to commit your changes out of files, it's going to know where in the cloud it needs to go to, which in this case is going to be in GitHub. Perfect. So now if I do a git status, it's going to tell me everything that I have new that I haven't added. So before I do that, I want to add a git ignore. So I'm going to pull my Veeam. And you can use either Veeam or you can use any type of editor. So what I'm going to do, instead of using Veeam, let's do code. Let's use, use code. So I'm going to do git ignore. And that's going to open Visual Studio Code for us. And also create a file. So let me wait until it opens. OK, perfect. Let's go back into Google. And I'm going to copy my git ignore file from the other project, paste it here. And let me just walk you through what it, this is doing right now. So what I'm telling what I'm telling Git is that I don't want to check anything in that that is part of the library folder. I don't want to also check anything that is you know in the temp directory, in the object directory, in the build directories, and so on. So this is a template that I downloaded from from GitHub. They keep track of you know what things needed to be ignored that we don't need to check in. So 
we're gonna we're gonna leave it as that and then let's go back into our terminal and then do a get a, get a status one more time and just before i keep going if you haven't downloaded core code just go ahead and download code from you know from the web you can search for visual studio code and let me do that pretty quick so you can see what we're downloading so you can download visual studio code for free and this is a really really good and powerful editor that I use for you know for making games you can use it for almost anything there are extensions that will allow you to work with unity and they work really well so do that download it and but if you don't want to download it you could have used Veeam as well which we could have done you know a Veeam get ignore and then that also works if you wanted to paste files so I'm not going to use Veeam for now because I want you to concentrate on the source control but we we will go into Veeam in another video Okay, perfect. So now that I added a, a new gitignore file, you can see that by adding the gitignore file, the library folder doesn't need to be added, the logs folder doesn't need to be added, and then the other ones that need to be added are the project settings, the package, and the assets, and, and of course the gitignore file. So that's great. Those are the ones that I want to add. So I'm just going to do git add and then dash a. And now if I do a git status one more time, you can see that all the files that are going to get added to source control, perfect. And I'm going to add a commit message and I'm going to say initial project files, perfect. And I'm just going to do a push and it's going to tell me that I need to set the default upstream. So I'm just going to paste that and then do that. And then right after, if I need to add more files, I'm not going to type, I'm going to have to type that whole thing. I can just do a git push and it's going to know what to do because I already set the upstream, which is going to be the origin and master. Now if I go back to Chrome and we can go back into source control, refresh this page, it's going to tell me that, yeah, the files were added. It's also going to tell me that to help people, you know, by providing them documentation, make sure that you add a readme. So I'm going to add a readme and it's going to add a readme file for me with some of the, the description that I already typed. That's fine. I'm happy with those. I'm just going to say commit new file. Perfect. And because I added a new file, I need to pull those changes to my local repository. I'm just going to say git pull. Perfect. And you can see that the readme got added. In fact, if I do a code readme, actually go here and make sure that I am selecting. Okay, perfect. So if I do a code and readme, if I can type it correctly, there we go. Or, or a Vim, you can see that I could have done code readme and that should open up in code. Perfect. And I can see all of that. If I wanted to make changes to these files, I can make those changes and then send it up in the cloud. So let's do that so that you can see that process. So this is Unity Editor Fundamental Video Source Code. And I can say that, you know, on the first video, and this is using Markdown. And if you're interested in working with Markdown as well, you can go here into the extensions and I already downloaded a markdown extension and let me see let me make sure that I do have it installed I think I installed it already so I'm gonna go back into the readme and I believe I already have it installed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my command palette and then markdown and hit enter and you can see that I have a preview let me click on this to split, uh, basically split the preview. And I'm going to put the preview on that side. Perfect. So let me go into extension so that I can tell you which one is the one that I install. And these are all the ones that I have installed. So the one that I install is called Markdown Linked. And that's the one that is giving me the preview on the right hand side. The reason why I like Markdown is because it's easy to read. If you do, you know, if you look at this on the right hand side, the reason why it's, it's, it's so big is because I'm using a pound symbol. So I won't go too much into detail on the markdown. I, I will put a link into a video that I did about markdown for you. For now, let's just do a couple of changes so that you can see how we can actually get them check in. So I can say video one, and then we can pull, you know, what we did on video one. So let me go back into YouTube and go back into my channel and we can see what the video one was so we can pull we can pull the title of this video we can say okay we did this on video one 
perfect and then we can do the same thing with video 2 and we can go back and I'm gonna do on video 2 just copy the description and I, I like to keep track of these ones because I, I like to show you you know what each video contains and the location of each video for now I'm just gonna do that I'll put the URL after I'm done with this video so perfect and what I can do now is I can do a git status I can add my changes I can say okay add it videos video descriptions to readme file and I can just say git push we can go into Chrome and I'm going to close this. I can hit refresh and you can see that now I have video one and video two description. Perfect. So that's really all we need to do in this video. We set up a new repository to keep track of our files and our changes about our game that we're working on or the prototype project that we're working on. So if you guys have any questions, let me know through the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video. Thank you guys.